Welcome back to Extricated, where we discuss hot topics in economics, governance, and politics. I am your host, KB, and together with me is my very, very good friend, K- DDB. What did you want How to say? You, you wanted to say KB. Eh? KB wanted to say KB. <laughs> what? KB is also my very good friend now. How about? KB wanted Jeez. to say KB. <laughs> don't, don't even <laughs> don't say that. <laughs> Okay. Um, listeners, today, listen, listeners, today, eh? just listeners. If you're listening to this, right? <laughs> guess what? See, just, just rewind back, right? You see that he, uh, he was when he was about to introduce me. He actually <laughs> said, he actually said before say DDB. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well. 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 You don't, don't, don't worry, don't worry. It happens to the best of us. It happens to the best of us. Right. <laughs> oh, well, welcome back, guys. Welcome to another episode. So today, we will be discussing, we'll be asking the age-old question, how, just how independent is INEC? It's not yet 2023, but, you know, the buzz has been going on. It has, you know, everybody's getting into the groove of the elections. Um, political parties have started their campaigns. So everybody is, everybody is talking about the elections right now. But then one question on the minds of, on, of everybody is how INEC is going to deliver. And there's always that fear when elections come that INEC is going to be partisan and it's going to, you know, have a level of um, uh, a level of partiality when it comes to wait, the wait, um, wait, elections. Wait, wait, before before we lead into something, <laughs> mm. let us let's let us explain what this island is, and um, let's on let, let's try and understand it right and um, get to know how it works. So let's let's start with the history, boring but all boring history. Well, yeah, this, we have to <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, as you know, INEC is a INEC is an electoral management body um, serving Nigeria. So the name INEC just is relatively new. Um, but the, but we've had an electoral electoral management body for a very long time. Maybe, had it even it's, before. It's over twenty years. Ago. It's over 20 years. How would you say it's relatively new? It's relatively <laughs> new. It's relatively new. Because wow. we've had we've had an electoral management body for over for over <laughs> even before um independence. So yeah, 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 at true. the time it was even being run by the whites. It was being known as the ECN, the Electoral Commission of Nigeria. So they were the ones that were tasked with running the federal elections of 1950. It was inaugurated in 1958 and they were tasked with running the federal elections in 1959 that brought into power our Nigerian leaders, our first Nigerian leaders. And during the military coup, the first military coup, we had a dissolution of that electoral corporation. It wasn't until Obasanjo's first tenure as Nigerian leader in the 1980s that the electoral management body was restored, albeit under a, a new name that's the Federal Electoral Commission or FEDECO, if you want. <laughs> so even that too got rebranded over time to NEC, you know. Then under General Abdul Salam Abubakar, it's now took the name INEC, that's Independent Natural, National Electoral Commission. So, to most people, <laughs> they, they feel the independent in that name is a psychological thing to tell you that, oh, okay, this commission is independent, it is, it is going to be impartial in whatever it is going to be doing, but still, Sometimes the commission acts like it's partisan. It acts in ways that makes people feel that it's not that independent. Um, but however, the, the INEC is still very important. It's very important. 
well, 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 well. I have, I have a lot of problems with the whole INEC thing, right? Especially the name itself, right? First of all, why did you name it INEC Independent? Why didn't you name it as NEC, right? National uh, what is it called? Electoral Commission. Well, anyway, they've named it already. So um, now let's. I want to give us a little clue of why they call it independent and why they feel INEC is independent. So yes, it's the federal government that does um, select, right? Basically, they don't they don't even select; they nominate, right? So what they what the um, government, the ruling government, does is they nominate people that are of good character that they feel that are of good character. You understand? And what they do now, that, that is where now the legislative aspect comes in. Now, the Senate does one thing, a test of character, right? So, since 1979, there is this thing of the federal character principle in the Constitution, right? Since 1979. And I think it has been modified in 1998 when Abdul Salam al Bakr now instituted INEC. So, how it works is that the ruling government will now nominate and then the Senate will now go through that character test for that particular person or a, a number of people and then they will select this person have shown over time and have shown over the period of the test that yes they are independent and not, not really independent but they are of good character and they can actually be autonomic right when they are uh, making their policies so now after that has happened good but that doesn't end there right now this is where this is where in INEC now will say it is very independent after this whole process what it does is it makes its own policies it governs itself you understand more like you bring up your ideas every single thing about INEC and how it runs right it's not governed by the federal government it's governed by that person being selected right by the senate right during the whole legislative process and <clears throat> now that makes it independent that makes it indif- independent let me say running or operating the whole process of the electoral um process right um during elections and all that and how they run themselves as a as a as a um as an organization right but then where there are gray areas is that these same people that were nominated um there's a lot of questions to be asked right people that nominated you are the ruling government that's number one then number two the people that are going to (laughs) um put you through a character test they might also be or supporting the ruling party right that's another thing so how are we to know that well through all this process right the ruling government did not push through or did not um, go behind um, behind the whole normal process to just push through and then appoint you as their own person just um, they're just going through the motions right for PR sick you understand so how are we, why, why should we even believe that your selection was not biased you understand and even after that your policies your ideas everything that you want to do you still have to right create a budget right and then send it back to the federal government to fund it most of it basically everything right so that's where the question lies right now um now this is the angle i'm going to come from right kb yeah INEC is not independent and will not completely or truly be independent right but then when they say independent right um there's something i sent you the other day um i think when we're having a chat and i talked about the and i think this is this is really really good they talked about being autonomic as a body yes yes that's part of their values actually yes. you know they they have they have their mission statement they have their vision they also have their set of values uh like, okay let me even let me even like mention their mission statement it said that they wish to serve as an independent and effective 
EMB, that's a electoral, electoral. management body, okay. um, committed to conduct to the conduct of free, fair, and credible elections for sustainable democracy in Nigeria. Uh-huh. Now, you see, Bob, you see, part of this mission statement it says to serve as an independent and effective electoral management body, right? Now, yes. this is where they are independent. Right, to and, serve. That, and, and that and that statement is very is is not is not ambi- there's no ambiguity in that statement. Like, mm-hmm. but from what we've seen so far, mm-hmm. <laughs> from what we've seen so far, we we it's like they've deviated severely from that from that mission statement. Well, now I think it's based on the character test and the person right now that this is where i'm coming from right when you say to serve as an independent and effective ele- election management body that is basically what they are meant to do right your job as the chairman of INEC, right is to independently have served towards an effective election management right to manage elections that is just what you are to do so that you're committed to one to three things right conduct free fair and credible elections that is what you're meant to do you understand Mm -hmm. so if somebody nominated you right no matter who the person is this is where your character is going to be tested now whatever happens it's on you as a chairman of INEC right yeah. to now see okay fine I've been selected now I have to be committed to now that election process right forget mm. about everything that is happening that election process I have to make sure that it's conducted in a free fair and credible way you understand yeah yeah so that now when Ooh. when that happens right you're increasing to the sustainability of democracy in the country mm. um only one person has done that to me in my own opinion and that's and even that and even that even at that maybe it's pr mm. maybe it's just peace but he actually did something that changed things let's say i uh, remember when um, they were about to when good luck the ruling party were about to postpone the election from february to march i don't know if you can remember that period i remember i remember the i remember that when they were collating and then a pdp representative came in and wanted to cause some troubles no, no, no not even that not 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 that okay apart from that um okay. remember when they uh, pushed it forward from february to march that was in 2015 right um what was it called good luck was trying to say that he was trying he was trying to push it uh, forward because uh, it was i neck that are causing the issue um they were having issues and atari rujega had to actually come out and actually retreat and say that the reason why they are postponing this election is not because of i neck but because of a, a different reason and it had to make a good luck Jonathan, to come out and actually say that it's because of security reasons you understand now if you now come back to um what, what did they call, this year mr mahmoud that's the current chairman right that man really there were there was circumstances against uh, what's it called certain things for them to postpone the whole deadline for uh, what's it called uh, primaries right but then if you look at if you look at it there was battle of wits but let me say who wants to show their hand first pdp and epc and during that whole process what happened was that buhari kept traveling out of the country and apart from traveling out of the country that make that that makes it that um, if it's not out nothing can happen with epc and that was so weird and they were just waiting for pdp to just do this before they can do this and then that made i need to push their own uh, what's it called um their deadline forward yeah which, which yeah, was not supposed that, to be so was, it was so it was so blatant to be yes. honest like even if even if that's not your intention it still looks that way you understand exactly like, you know um you were strict you were like everybody must do it this way mm-hmm. you understand everybody must have their 
um, presidential candidates ready by June third, I think. I think yeah, that was June third. Yeah, June third. Yeah. So PDP, no, nobody was really ready to be honest. But PDP and some of the other major parties, they rushed and did theirs. You know, tried to bring out their um, candidates and stuff. APC was. APC, I think APC was also confused, but they were also tactical at the same time. So they kind of waited. So you know, you know when they made the announcement was even when this person, when the president jetted out, because that was when they now made the announcement that it's going to be extended. Yes. You know, so that gives it. So okay, yeah, just like APC is trying to look at. PDP say, okay, let's see who we are going to bring out so that we will know who we are going to bring out. They say, okay, if you are going to bring out Atiku Abubakar, I want to bring out somebody that can match him, um, maybe ethno religiously, geopolitically, all those type of things, you know. And so, even, which, and even capacity wise, so, so yes, which they did because, in the end, you know, forget the whole um, them trying to push. Um, the Senate President Ahmed now and forward, in the, they knew that the, 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 they knew that their best bet was to go with Tinubu. Yeah, and that's what it. But then, see that from but then the question, step back but, the, but then the question is not even about APC, right? It's about the integrity mm-hmm. of IMEC yeah, as a body, right? Like why, why, <laughs> why, why would you, why would you even give, give a party that? And if, let's 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 not even. This is the same. This is the same body that could not, you know, extend the CVR, you know, for more than I think it was I think when they said um, they're going to stop the deadline for the voting, uh, sorry for, for voter registration yeah. was made. I think after some pressure, they added an, ex- an extra month. Mm-hmm. So that's let's say June thirtieth now, right? I think so. You have a full, okay, no, no, not a full, half a year to the election, basically, and you are stopping voter registration. How does that even make sense? How do you get the accurate number? How do you get a great number of people to get their voters, um, voters' cards ready to come and vote? You know, especially the fact that most of those people that are going to be underserved at that point are very young people who will just be trying to come into. Um, what's it called trying to come into the political for it for example for the first time and you know that they are not going to they are not going to fancy the ruling party for example so that is another another way you guys will say these people might be favoring the ruling party again aside from the um, extension of that um extension of the deadline for the primary election uh, primary elections at uh, presidential primaries you know so those things are very suspicious. I mean, you you say okay, that's not pro stone, but come on, those things are suspicious. <laughs> All right. So, like for for me, yeah, that's very true. They're actually very very suspicious, right? Hugely suspicious. But um, to answer the the question of just how independent is INEC, right? It depends on the person, uh, the person it that is the chairman. Yeah, that is going to be the chairman, right? Um. If you're put as the chairman of INEC, right, it's whether you're whether at that point, right, INEC being independent depends on you, right? It depends yeah. on you. Forget about how they've said of INEC Independent National Electoral Commission, forget it. The person that is going to be the chairman, it depends if that person is actually independent, right? That person, yeah, INEC is going to be independent. That's what I feel. That's that. Yeah, that's what that shows. Kind of that is not easily swayed. You know, we stand, we stand exactly. any pressure. You know? Exactly. Exactly. Right. I mean, you mentioned you mentioned um, Atahiri Chega, um, but then there was also another person. I think I'm not. I've, I've been trying to remember the name since you mentioned. You know, you mentioned Atahiri Chega being the only person you see that has that shown uh, that that, that has shown, shown yes. Then, in history, you know, I think, uh, what was his name? The person that presided over the um, 1993 election, the ill-fated 1993 election, he received a lot of pressure not to go, go not to go through that election. Mm. 
believe that a pair not to go through the election, but he, I think that's Dr. Humphrey Wosu. Yeah, I think yeah. that was his name. Okay. So he he received a lot of pressure not to go through with the election, but he decided to go through with it, and um, the you know how it ended, you know yeah. everything the, the stuff got annulled, you know the um. MK Rabiola who everybody and that was like they keep on saying that that was like the freest fairest election that Nigeria has ever had but and anyway um Humphrey was actually tried not um nothing against him it's actually that was that was there but now at the moment huh, I think I was not even born all you know is what you've read yeah, that, that is busy so yeah. what I've experienced be, 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 be what, all through what I've experienced right is since the late 90s till now is that night the one that I actually believe that yes he was free and fair right he was mm. a tiny yeah, and, and the guy was and fit they, he was so and they said that the 2015 election was the freest since mm. the return of the 1999. Yeah, exactly. And I wanted to say that time that you said 1993 election was the freest and fairest ever in Nigeria, but mm. then they also saying that 2015 was the freest mm. since the return of democracy in 1999. Yeah. yeah. So, so in, in and conf- that's just and that's due to Atahiru Jega's um, personality, basically. Yeah. So in conclusion, yeah. Um, for me, INEC is not truly independent, but it depends on how you see it, as I said, right? On it, uh, on that mission statement, right? They are actually independent, right? And for them to be independent, it depends on who the chairman is. If the chairman is, in, is independent, INEC is going to be independent. If the chairman is not independent, I make this government to be independent. It's as yeah. simple as it's So, as so as we are that. saying that the most important factor in making INEC truly independent is whoever shares it, basically. Yes. Whoever becomes their chairman yes. or chair lady, yes. basically. Yes. Yeah. That's, so, that, that's it. <laughs> no, that's, that's the most important factor, truly. Because if you truly, most, most electoral management bodies aren't that independent because all over the world they take america for example the same way we go through the u.s president is going to nominate someone then the senate has to um confirm that person then the person comes into power so you know there's that government influence obviously but then if you are going to, if you are the type of person that is that is going to favor the person that brought you to your position then your your EMB is not truly independent. So if you say you are say because uh, okay this man appointed me, uh, so let me let me re- let me give him a favor or that type of thing. No, it's not supposed to be so. You're you're supposed to show integrity. You're supposed to show a kind of intellectual stubbornness. <laughs> um, so to to and also a diligence in in. Um, carrying out your duties as the chairman so that's really the most important part if you can do that as a if if, if a person can do that as as a head of an EMB or as a head of INEC specifically now you show that oh you are your your commission is actually independent you know not just by name yeah by character <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, this this wraps everything we've talked about, Inek, and um, I hope you enjoyed the discussion. Uh, well, well, well. Kibi has already talked what he has to say. Um, so thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much for being on um, this. So please engage with us on social media, on Instagram, right? Um, just tell us what you think on this whole INEC thing, right? Um, it's been it's been a question. I think every year <clears throat> I asked. I I went on um, on Twitter and on Google. I typed how independent is INEC. 
do you know that I think every single publication <laughs> in this country have actually mm-hmm. asked that question. Even I mean, even when I was a kid, <laughs> I sometimes hear my my mom, my uncles, my dad asking that question. You know, at that time I was like, okay, <laughs> well, what are these people talking about? Yeah. So but then now, you know, um, it's it's we are we are also part of the conversation. Mm-hmm. You know, we are also asking the same question. Yeah. You know, so it's it's an that's why I said it's an age old question. <laughs> I think this question is not yeah. going to end as long as that independent is always there in that name. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So please uh, let us know of your opinion. Um, that, that we would love that. Thank you very much and have an amazing week. Bye.